nobody loves me, nobody loves me, nobody loves me mood. Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast, guys. I am Spencer Cardia. I am Arowana. Ar- Is that marijuana <laughs> without just- the M? realized it sounds exactly like marijuana but no it's a fish and it's a-r-o-w-a-n-a arowana arowana so you know there's smoked fish (laughs) could you say i'm smoking arowana i my son's a fishmonger wait this here is frank all right my son's a fishmonger fishmonger. have you ever met him yeah i always feel like that's an insult I always think it sounds so ancient. Yeah. Fishmonger. Fishmonger. Imagine you have like dried fish over your back and you're selling it for furs. Yeah. Um, the Canterbury Tales, they've come across the fishmonger. But um, literally, he's a fishmonger. He works in the seafood department at a... Global chain. Global chain. Thank you for that. A global fish... R- run by a, mul- a multi-billionaire. <laughs> who's, 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 um, whose offspring has disowned him. Really? Yeah, I got a lot of stuff in my mind. I, I bet they How am I going to keep track of all these stories? I bet, they, I bet they wouldn't have disowned him if, uh, you know, if he said, "All right, you're not getting any money." Bop, bop, bop. He might have. I doubt it. Elon Musk is not my son, but it's the it's the person we're talking about, right? No, it's not. Oh no! You think Justin, Elon? Justin Bates. <laughs> Justin Bates. I don't even know who that is. Okay, I'm sorry, Jeff Bezos. Your your child is not disowning you. I got mixed up. Oh. Jeff Bezos. Thank you. I'm talking about Elon Musk, Muscatoon. Oh, uh, okay. Has a, has an offspring who I believe is transgender, and Elon had talked bad about transgenders. Mm. So this offspring went to court. They're over 18, and they said, um, I want absolutely no connection, nothing to do. So I don't think they will take money. See, that's silly. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's a pride thing. Yeah. But for me. For June. I'm, I'm never anti-money, all right? I know. It's hard. And I, I think it's cutting off your nose to spite your face. It's cutting and off I, your I, nose I, to spite all of the LGBTQ community. That's what I was about community. to say. I, like, it, it, it's, it's noble, but nobility only gets you so far. It's not noble. It's prideful. It's prideful. Pride only gets you so far where don't do all that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Take the money and promote the heck out of right. pro-LGBT q plus, plus mm-hmm. um you know uh, issues and issues yeah. and, mm-hmm. and, and and voice it it's like you it might be the richest heir that is trans on on planet earth right don't give all that up yeah don't give all that up use it and and, and, and you can talk freely it's different if he got disowned or yeah. he or she got disowned Who i think it? it's a she, it might be vivian okay. and, she, and she's taken her mother's maiden name okay you got disowned, and then it's like, okay, you can you can say, ah, uh, yeah, well, you yeah, can't well, disown can... me. I would disown you. Yeah. But if you're still in the pocket, I would I would be the loudest the loudest offspring you're of right. the the parent. You're right. And be I'll keep the last name. Gotta... At least at least one Musk will have it right. Yeah. Do it. Um. Get away from those emotions. So I mixed that up. So. Okay. Back to the fishmongers. He's a fishmonger, and um. I never thought he, he works in the seafood department. You never thought he would get that far. <laughs> hey, it's he is extremely talented. Um, he's an extremely talented, funny enough, a hair cutter, but he's also an extremely talented fish cutter. And it, it's, it's hopefully not. He, hopefully he doesn't open up like a shop that does both. At the same time, mixes um, up the scissors. No, but <laughs> it's very hard to, he can skin the fish, you know, straight to, he can, he can deep bone it. Um, and I will it, make him a fisher of men. It's it's harder than you think. But anyway, so we he 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 actually cut his finger. We went to urgent care, and they said, "What's your occupation?" And he said, "Fishmonger." And I thought, "Is that <laughs> is that 2022?" Yeah. Here it is, and and just today, um, I was looking in um, you know, current events newspaper online, and it was Amber Heard. Have you heard? She's in the Hamptons. You know the Hamptons in New York. Yeah. Very ritzy. Yeah. It's their summer play. Rich like people's. Beverly Hills of New York. Thank you, of the East Coast. And um, is she, is she is at the fish counter in a in one of their grocery stores. Yeah. And it says, like, being helped by a fishmonger. And I'm like, this is a word. This is a title. This That's is a, a title. thing. It's an occupation. Well, because what would you be? 
I know. I was thinking. You're not a fisher. No, because, you're not a fisherman. Because the meat cutter gets a special name, butcher. Yeah. But that's the verb of cutting stuff up. But he's cutting stuff up. Yeah, but you, you, couldn't, you couldn't call him a, a, a fisher. We, because... Hair cutter. We call him a hair cutter. Why don't we call him a fish cutter? Well, because well, what's monger mean? You know, maybe that's what that means. And a fish cutter is not really. I a thought a monger killing. was a seller. Like fear mongering. Aren't you? Perm- aren't you like yeah. selling well, fear? Well, I think that's what it is because you work at a fish market and you're mongering fish. Yeah, you know what? Because maybe true, not true, but maybe a lot of fish mongers of the past weren't cutting them. It was a barrel of fish, and you were you were yeah buying fish like, unlike meat, right? Like where you can't be given a cow, you won't know what to do with it. Especially back in the a day, dead one. You mean you would you would have on hooks <laughs> yeah. or on ice? Oh yeah, the fish, and you would give it to like. Yeah, this happens still a lot of places in the world where you're not buying a steak of of, of a right. fish. You're, you're steak of a fish. Yeah, like a, steak of a fish. What are you saying right now? There's there's like fish salmon steaks. steak or tuna yeah. steak. It's like where it's like cut into slivers. Yeah, you're like right. How no, it's like packaged. That, yeah, okay. But you would buy a fish, and then you would you know make use the head for a broth and. Would you pay three hundred thousand dollars for it? I would. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's three hundred thousand or thirty thousand. I get my zeros mixed up. I'm pretty sure it's three hundred thousand. The fish that I am, the arowana. Yeah. Oh, I know what I was gonna say. But the reason I brought up the fishmonger, my son's a fishmonger. You're so proud. I'm gonna tell him. <laughs> I'm gonna tell him to make a recipe for arowana. Marijuana, arowana, like you know, oh. you smoke infused fish, marijuana, or oh no, it wouldn't be smoke infused. It would be like that. Um, the oils. The, the EBT. Yeah. EBT. <laughs> That's food stamps. I don't think there's anyone has three hundred thousand dollars. Food stamps. CBD. Yeah. A well, CB- THC. CBD doesn't do uh, any. THC. Whatever. I'm gonna tell my son who's a fishmonger <laughs> to make marijuana arowana. Okay. That's uh, you might be onto something. For nothing less but the name, arowana is a fish and it's beautiful and and they have them in aquariums. Um, but they're I think they're carnivorous, so like they uh. bite you and stuff. They have teeth. But they're um but I believe that there's one that's like they can grow really, really big and really beautiful and really special and he and they he sold for three hundred thousand dollars. He or she. Yeah. Maybe it doesn't have a gender, you know? Gender fluid. I saw a bird yesterday. <laughs> How's this for banter? <laughs> then what happened? Have you seen these birds around? You work in a you work in a, um you work in, in the wildlife um forestry. Yeah. <laughs> You've really manly <laughs> Oh, blackbird and he has red sh- red shoulders oh no it's really neat and look i saw some the red um, shouldered blackbird it's the red wings blackbird <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> was that it? i know because you work in forestry <laughs> yeah i was close um i saw some in tyler state park that had bright red shoulders and um, the ones i saw yesterday a little dingy uh, oranger maybe it was the females no this oh. is what i'm going to tell you so i said i keep seeing this bird what is it here it turns out it's a red winged the red wings red wing black in the team yeah yeah red wing blackbird and they're pretty common um so it's not i I didn't yeah you didn't bring the old binoculars <laughs> but out. it told me you're seeing boy birds because once again the girl is dingy brown yeah and, and he's there sh- showing those shoulders and i'm glad you brought that up you know because is it fair that the guys need to get the reddish shoulders and the girls don't. Yeah. Or did you ever go home after a hard day of fishmongering <laughs> and your dumb wife didn't cook you dinner? Or husband. No. Wife. <laughs> oh, right. In this analogy, it has to be man yeah. woman because. Or 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 dinner's cold. What's that to do with red shoulders? Or, 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 or your wife complains about her friends or doesn't take or asks you to take out the trash. Does that ever get under your skin? Is this a commercial for the 1950s, maybe? <laughs> yeah, and you just want to lay a hand on her. Um, well, if you do... Friday. Well, if you do, you're wrong, because today is National Relationship Equity Day. So tell, take that, red-shouldered blackbird. I didn't... Red-winged. Red-winged blackbird. <clears throat> I walked into your nonsense when you were you were just setting me up to tell me... Setting that, you up. Dang holiday. Yeah. Okay, it's Relationship Equity Day, and that is a day where... 
you take a step back and you realize that a relationship is meant to be 50 50 which especially in gender roles which we talked about for father's day yeah it's not e- it's not equitable well, it's not equitable um and so uh it's you know. equal but not equitable right because we they, you both have a day it's equal yeah. there's a mother's day and father's day but you told us that it's not equitable meaning mm-hmm. Something's going on that it's number 20. Yeah. So it's about a balance in a relationship. You know, how about yeah. how about if, if your 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 husband always cooks and cleans, it's your turn. Speaking of, I don't want it to be equitable. I want it to be swapped. <laughs> I would love to be a house husband. And before I get attacked and it's like. No one is going to attack you. Where are you from? Are you from a time capsule? Are you from. Have you been transported here from. No, there's tons of house husbands. No, what I'm saying is attacked because like I am glorifying it by and like oh, because it's oh, hard not have to work. <laughs> Give me that job. Listen, it is very very hard, and I'm not just saying yes. that to be popular. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna make you the popular kid in school. <laughs> um, no, what I so yeah, so that's what I that's why I was saying I don't want to oh, be attacked. Oh, I thought you were saying like just for the, just for one to be a house husband proposing. No, it. for like being like oh, if only. My thing isn't that it's hard. It's that it's the stuff I like to do. You know okay. what I mean? Like I, I, if I had to put 12 hours into something, I would love to clean and cook. Like I enjoy those things. They bring me peace. Interesting. Rather than, you know, being at a job well, for eight hours. That's really great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, people should find out what, but it is true because that's what makes harmony in yeah. the community when people are doing, um, you know, and then you, because there are people who that is not their cup of tea and they, yeah. they love, they love the, tra- the, what's it called? The commute. And they love the yeah. work on, you and know, just the, being, being away from home and uh, being away from home and, and interacting yeah. with people or selling or whatever. And so that's where you get the harmony. There's people who like to sell. There's people who like to buy. There's people who like to build and the dis, disharmony, sure, uh, is when you're forcing people like no yeah. you need to be doing this and well, that, that's a big thing about sleeping um there is genotypes okay is that a word yeah today of like so we are live in a society where we're forcing everyone to go along the same rules okay and that is you wake up at 7 a.m go to work oh, at right, 9 right. 5 and we have societally made it so if you're not a morning person you're a lazy person right when i, I read a book like oh it's why we sleep i think okay and it was talking about like first of all it, it it can be done wrong like i could think i'm a night person because i love going out mm-hmm. and, and and a lot of people do and it's like and also more than that if i stay up all night i'm going to be tired in the morning right nobody on six hours of sleep is like the birds are trying to shine yeah it's talking about in ideal situations and it's talking about productivity. Some people can be in bed getting their work done on their laptop. I'm not one. I'm a morning person. Right. For the, the time I, I have most productivity is, like I said, well rested. I'm not missing out on anything mm-hmm. in the mornings. And, and um, so, yeah, back to what you're saying of this equation. It, it's It's good to learn yourself more rather than just say, oh, I like this and I... I'm. I'll never be a morning person, right. and, and like say it negatively. But it's like, you no, know, find what find what does work for you. Right. Find what is good. How about that? Be a farmer. They wake up early. Mm-hmm. National Farmer Day. That's all I'm gonna say about is it? that. Yeah. Fishing, farming, and agriculture, guys. It is Friday. Okay. That's why we're a little nuts. It's Friday, January. <laughs> why do you keep making it January? I don't know. There's a lot of J's. But June, July, July. January. Is that is, is there any other repeating letters? Because J has three, and J's not even that common of a March and May. March and May. Um. Hmm. Yeah, that's it. We're like everyone's running through their mind. <laughs> <right now. laughs> yeah. Uh, if you think of any that we didn't get, you let us know. Um. It is June twenty fourth. Um. Beautiful day on Ju- in on June we do a thing called. On Fridays, we do a little thing called Dr. Seuss Friday. We haven't done it in a while. Seven days. Yeah. Yeah, seven days ago was the last time we did it. I keep rewatching it. So uh, for me. Just the same one? 
No, I go through the playlist. Ah, uh, the playlist. Yeah, it's like the um DJ playlist. Yeah, yeah. I go through the Crook and Crow, Dr. Seuss playlist, which is available on YouTube. Okay. Well, it's Dr. Seuss Friday, and what do we do, you might ask, on this podcast? We read a Dr. Seuss book, and before you you attack me, I'm always worried <laughs> of the attackers. Um, and say it's a kid's book. We understand that it was a book created for children, but we like Dr. Seuss. Yeah. We like him. And he wasn't a child. He was a man. Once he was. and But not when he was an author. And through his, his, his wacky images and his clever rhymes, there are meanings in these books. Mm-hmm. Meanings that haven't been uncovered to us since we were a child. And even then, we might have osmosisized yeah. the deeper meaning. But we didn't really get to think about it. No. So we're going back with our adult brains and we are looking at it again. And you might think, you're a whack job. And that lady next to you is a <laughs> marijuana fiend. Um, but guess what? We've done we've done more than 20 we're weeks. We're more than that. We're more than Not that we're not that, but we're more we're, than we're that. More than, we're that and some. Um, we've done this for 20 weeks now and only once did we walk away without anything. We are Red on fish, 20. Fish, I'm looking at you. I think we're on 27 or something. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So if you watch one every day, you can practically fill up the month of February. Um, Spencer, February following January? <laughs> well, because there's only 28 days in February. Oh, 30 I thought yet. you were still confused about where we were. <laughs> no. <laughs> that would be bad. If Like, I not only messed up a J and a J, I thought next month was February. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> All right, guys. Today we are reading Daisy Head Maisie. By Dr. Seuss. So remember, when it says by Dr. Seuss, it means he illustrated it. Okay. If it said it's by Theodore Lesig, he wrote it but didn't illustrate it. And so, <sighs> uh, I already like it. There's a cat. She has a daisy head. There's a daisy growing out of her head. What is this? What happens when... Let's not read that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's the uh, cover. So you know why? Because we usually have the hard covers with no um, jacket. I was thinking it's you weird. A jacket when, today. He like draws. Look, if you look in the very back, you'll see Doctor um, Doctor Theodore Lissig. Ah, there he is, Theodore Seuss Geisel. Geisel, I can never say it. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> it's hard to believe such a thing could be true, and I hope such a thing never happens to you. But it happened, they say, to poor Maisie McGrew. It happened like this: she was sitting one day at her desk in her school, in her usual way, when she felt a small twitch on the top of her head. So Maisie looked up, and she almost dropped dead. Something peculiar was going on there. A daisy was sprouting right out of her hair. Boing. Behind her was sitting young Herman Butch Strudel. This looks like a daisy up here on her noodle. It doesn't make sense why it couldn't be so. A noodle's no place for a daisy to grow. Then up spoke another boy, Einstein von Tass, the brightest young boy in the whole of the class. I had to change yeah. class because I messed up Tass. It's a very odd place to be sprouting a daisy, but nevertheless, one is growing on Maisie. Hey, look it, cried Butch, right here in this room. Daisy had Maisie. She's bursting in bloom. Miss Sneecher, the teacher, came rushing up quick. Such nonsense, some child is playing a trick. Which one of you boys stuck that thing in her hair? You know that a daisy could never grow there. But teacher, said Butch, I saw the thing rise right out of her head with my very own eyes. Just give it a yank if you think I tell lies. Miss Nietzsche had heard quite enough of this talk. Maisie, hold still. Let me get at this stalk. Ouch, hollered Maisie. Quit yanking, Bush said. You're giving her pains. I bet that those roots go way down in her brains. The kids in the room stared, started shouting like crazy. Daisy had Daisy had Daisy had Maisie. Children, be quiet. Miss Nietzsche was puzzled. Good grief and alas, to think that this happened right here in my class. I've taught in this room 20 years, maybe more, but I've never seen anything like this before. I'll have to report it. You'll just have to come to the principal's office and show Mr. Grum. Now, the principal, good Mr. Gregory Grum, was a very wise man, not just as smart as they come. He knew more than anyone else in this nation about long division and multiplication. He knew all the answers why oceans are deep, why the skies are so high, and why the mountains are steep. He should have the answers to this thing on Maisie, my word, he declared, it's a genuine daisy. I've seen them quite often in the fields growing wild, but never before on the head of a child. Now what in the world ever made this thing sprout? I have no idea, but I'm going to find out. It says here, it says, daisy grows on the land. 
They grow between rocks. They also grow in the sand. It mentions right here they can grow in a pot, but mention the head of a girl? It does not. Daisies, it says, sometimes grow in Alaska. Also Missouri, Rhode Island, Nebraska. They grow in Japan and in Spain and Peru, in India, France, and in Idaho too. They grow in South Boston and also in Rome. But why should they grow on this little girl's dome? Say, look it, said Maisie. It's wilting, said teacher. How wonderful, Maisie. It soon will be dead. You will be rid of that daisy. In just a few minutes, our troubles will pass. Declare Dr. Grum, take her back to the class. Then the principal saw a most terrible sight. The daisy was dying, and that was all right. But that daisy was part of poor Maisie McGrew, and Maisie was starting to wilt away too. Teacher, said Grum, you know what I think? They're both going to die. Hurry, bring them a drink. This is a problem, said Grum with a frown. You take Maisie away and you make her lay down. You lock her up tight in that room down the hall. There are quite a few numbers that I've got to call. Get Maisie's mother on the end of the line. I need her here quickly, while there's still time. Maisie's mom asked, what's all of the fuss? Goodness to Betsy, I'll be on the next bus. A call to the shoe store reached Mr. McGrew. He asked while holding a customer's shoe. She's growing a what? I'm coming right there. And he ran out of the shoe store with no time to spare. A doctor should see her, the principal said, and an expert on plants like the one on her head. So he called Dr. Einsbart, who said, goodness gracious, a child with a head that is partially herbaceous. I simply must see, I'll come over to you, and his patient, though shirtless, came to see it too. Then Grum called Fitch the florist, who grabbed for his shears, I'll be there as fast as my truck can shift gears. Meanwhile, poor Maisie lay down on a couch, the daisy slumped down on its stem in a slouch. The wi but the window was open because it was warm, and the sweet smell and daisy attracted a swarm of bees, 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 bees. Maisie jumped out of the window. What else could she do? But the faster she ran, the faster they flew. In the park, she ran into Officer Thatcher. The bees on her heels were starting to catch her. He said, wait a minute, kid, I'll be right back, and left Maisie alone to fend off the attack. Thatcher returned with a fishbowl and a bucket, into which went the fishbowl from the bowl, then he stuck it. On top of her head, she felt like a fool. Kid, I'm taking you back to your school. Principal Grum did not know what to do. It's worse, cried Miss Nature, much worse than we feared. The Daisy and Maisie have both disappeared. Behind her came charging Mr. McGrew, chased by a customer, chased in his shoe. Finch the florist, Dr. Einsbart too, Dr. Einsbart's patient, and Mrs. McGrew. When the door opened and came in poor Maisie, wearing a fishbowl, protecting her daisy, then Officer Thatcher, who looked all around, said, Anyone here know this kid that I found? Mama, cried Maisie as she ran into her mother, but Mrs. McGrew stepped back with a shudder. I think I feel faint, she just managed to utter. Stand back, yelled the doctor as he looked about. Allow me, to ma allow me some room to examine her spout. sprout. The doctor approached stethoscope to his ear, but the wail of the siren was soon all he could hear. And then without warning, the door opened wide, and who but the mayor should step right inside. At acting important, there was none to compare. He was best at long speeches, chock full of hot air. I promise my friends that if I'm re-elected, the daisy on Maisie will be disconnected. The law of our fathers is simple and sound. Daisies belong and should stay in the ground. The rest are illegal, we'll bar them from town. Then just as the mayor finished his talk, Finch the florist began to quietly walk and standing directly right behind Maisie, said, I know the way to get rid of a daisy. So there's a flower between her two ears. I'll snip it clean off with my sharp pruning shears. But Maisie, she saw him and let out a screech. She pushed him aside and raced out his reach. Maisie ran from the school, headed straight out of town. She came to a meadow and fell to the ground. With her head in her hands, she lay all alone. Her heart, it was broken. She could never go home. Nobody loves me, nobody loves me, nobody loves me, mood, she cried. Nobody loved her, poor Maisie McGrew. It's hard to believe such a thing could be true. And maybe that's why then this daisy above, when Maisie below began talking of love. Well, you know about daisies when love is in doubt. The job of a daisy is try and find out. They love her, they love her not. They love her, they love her not. They... L Don't worry, Maisie, said her daisy. As its last petal fell, they love you. Then the stalk disappeared. 
Well, that's how it all happened. The thing went away, and Maisie McGrew is quite happy today. Back at her studies and doing just great in all of her subjects in room number eight. And concerning that Daisy, you know it, that it never grew out of the top of her head again ever. Er, well, it practically never popped up there again, excepting occasionally just now and then. And after all, I'm getting used to it. The end. The way the jacket's coming off the book is driving me crazy. Crazy Daisy. Crazy Daisy? Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing that drove me crazy was the mom said, goodness to Betsy. I thought she said, goodness gracious. No. And um, I read it. I heard it. And I said, why does that sound weird? And then I said. Wait, when did she say that? When she got the phone call? I think so, yeah. And um, it's. we, we if Goodness we, to Betsy. Right. Um, so, so obviously. It's, it's heaven, heaven to Betsy? Heaven, yeah. Heavens to Betsy. Heaven, heaven. Heavens to Betsy. Which. Is still an old time saying. Or goodness gracious. Or goodness gracious. And that book was written at the time when people used to use these exclamations. And so I, it just was struck me like, wait, we never say goodness to Betsy. Well, maybe that's a thing. Maybe. Um, also, you know, I spoke about Amber Heard in the beginning. And now I can never, every time I hear or see a bee, um, I think of that meme. My, my dog stepped on a bee. <laughs> <laughs> when the bees were chasing her. I'm like, yeah. did your dog step on it? Um, it also kind of put me in mind of, I don't know if this is too, um, controversial, but <clears throat> when we were talking about Elon Musk's child yeah, being, um, transgender and being disowned or being people being against it, people being afraid of it, people saying there's something about you that's so incredibly odd and we need to fix it right away. Yeah. It, you know, this happened to her. Nothing. Yeah. But there was another book like that where they were getting insulted, right? And like, or for being different. Mm -hmm. But I feel like Dr. Seuss. I I kind of maybe I stumbled on my words a bit at like where the climax. Oh, okay. But what happened? Oh, well, she felt unloved. Okay. So do you know how to play with the daisy? You take it and he loves me and you pluck off the petal. He loves me not. And it's like a little fake fortune telling thing that however many petals you can find out if yeah. someone loves you or not. So the, the daisy itself plucked itself to let her know, let's see if they love you. Because what, what's her question before the petals start popping off? Nobody loves me. Nobody loves me. Nobody loves me. She cried. All right. So she's upset that nobody loves me. And so the daisy says, like, let's do this traditional thing of nobody like. Nobody loved her. Poor Maisie McGrew. It's hard to believe such a thing could be true. And maybe that's why then this daisy above. So the Maisie daisy below began talking of love. Well, you know about daisies when love is in doubt, the job of a daisy is. So it's like a classic thing. So, so the, the daisy plucked itself and then it it did. It ended up when they love you. And then so then she was happy because she's like, Wait, I do feel I am love. They don't hate me. But like, was that why the daisy showed up? Probably because it says it shows up later. That, that's like that's what I'm saying. Is this like a book about like self-love? I think so. You know, because yeah. it's like. It's, it's a visualization of. You know, of, um, uncertainty, like uncertainty, like anxiety. Yeah. Um, thinking people don't like you. Right. And, and then because, yeah, it was called. That's why I, I like that. It said that where it said. Yeah. Um, yeah. It never grew in her head again. Eh, well, it practically never popped up except occasionally just now and then. Where and, it, 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 you know, when things pop up in our head. Yeah. It's in we're talking about in our mind. Yeah. You know, this is obviously a visualization so it's popping up on, out of her scalp but we have doubts and fears that pop up in our mind all the time and it would not do us well you know like the florist was like let's just cut it off let's yeah. just because but that didn't yeah it's not solving it. the problem yeah yeah well, let's cover it up it was the, the police officer said right um let's was that a, was let it, it die out they wanted to um you know because it needed yeah. water you know yeah but yeah, so it's about like mental health is what Daisy yeah, and had also Maisie's like about. If you, they were trying to deal with that and not hurt. That's what remember she was. Well, yeah. So this is about mental health, and you didn't even realize it because that's when yeah. like they try to pull it out originally, and the boys like, I bet that goes right down to her brain. And they and and people were teasing her. Yeah. In the beginning of the book, this book's about mental health and under she needs she's understanding that she needs to love herself. And not let the anxiety spiral because everyone was trying to help her, even if it was misconstrued. Right. 
And it's easy to think like they don't understand, right? Is this like a, they don't understand me? Right. They don't love me. And yeah. It's like they do love you, and you, it's time you love yourself. Daisy right. had Maisie, and once she learned that, it went away, and came back every, every now and again. We have our little and uh, slip ups. Yeah, realistic. Where, where we uh we we lose that that self love, that self appreciation. Right, and she solved it. Not the very important mayor, you know, the government, yeah, not yeah. the police officer who is, you Well, know, that was the other thing that the mayor said. He was like, teacher. we're going to outlaw this. And it's like that kind of like, let's not even talk about right. fixing the problem. Right. Let's, let's just get rid of the problem. Yeah, because I even, I found it a little, oh, surprising when she saw her mother and she, you know, she, remember she wanted yeah. to run to the mom and the yeah. mom recoiled, you know, because it really is not. You know, your parents can't solve it for you. The government, you know, it's like you have to know yourself, regardless who your parents are, or yeah. who your teacher is, or who your classmates are. Yeah. Um, Daisy had Maisie. There's a lot of editor notes that I didn't read, but I think it's something that's interesting about the way this came out. Okay. But we'll figure that out some other time. Um, until then, uh, I'm going to camp. So uh, I will see you guys next Wednesday. Um, yeah. And have fun and love yourself. You're going to. Be a counselor. Don't remind me. <laughs> Peace. Okay.